He's an Oscar-winning director who's famous for his Italian subject matter and crime dramas. His movies are known for their depictions of redemption, crime, violence, and liberal use of profanity. I think that the president should just clean up this whole mess here. He should just flush it right down the toilet. With a career spanning over four decades, Martin Scorsese is widely regarded as one of the most significant and influential filmmakers in history. Martin Charles Scorsese was born November 17, 1942 in Queens, New York. As a young boy, he had asthma preventing him from playing sports. This left him visiting the movie theaters quite often and developing a great passion for cinema. He obtained a master's degree in film directing at New York University. It was in 1968 that he made his first feature-length film titled Who's That Knocking at My Door, starring his fellow classmate Harvey Keitel. It marked the start of his career and would serve as a blueprint for years to come. In 1973, Scorsese directed his first crime drama, Mean Streets. It follows Harvey Keitel's character, Charlie, on his journey through the New York mob. When you come out going shopping when you owe somebody money, Johnny, that ain't right. How much you got, you? Charlie, I'm gonna pay him next week. I'm gonna pay you! Yeah. Scorsese got to experiment some of his early directorial techniques and began a long-time collaboration with actor Robert De Niro. The two of them would later make the iconic film Taxi Driver in 1976. It tells the story of Travis Bickle, a Vietnam vet turned late night taxi driver turned vigilante, who attempts to clean up the streets of New York single handedly. Someday a real rain will come and wash all the scum off the streets. It was Scorsese's big break and it established his reputation as a filmmaker. You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Taxi driver would go down as one of the greats. <sighs> Scorsese then decided to take on his first big budget project in 1977 with New York, New York. But unfortunately, it was a box office failure. This led Scorsese into depression and an addiction to cocaine. Convinced he would never make another movie, he overdosed on cocaine and was sent to the hospital. It was close friend Robert De Niro that helped him kick his cocaine addiction and would later persuade him to make the biographical sports drama Raging Bull. It shows Italian-American boxer Jake LaMotta, whose self-destructive and obsessive rage destroys his relationship with his family. It's hailed as one of the greatest sports movies of all time due to Scorsese and De Niro's creativeness. Robert De Niro even trained with the middleweight champion himself and packed on 60 pounds to play the fat version of Jake LaMotta. Go get him, champ. <laughs> Scorsese took a different turn in 1983 with The King of Comedy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Although it didn't do well at the box office, in years since, it's become well regarded by critics. Yeah, I know. You look wonderful too, Jerry. I wasn't leaving you out. <laughs> Bru yeah! <laughs> Scorsese later went on to direct films such as The Color of Money and his deeply religious project The Last Temptation of Christ, and even the music video to the song Bad by Michael Jackson. After a decade of mixed results, in 1990, Martin Scorsese made what is considered his greatest film to date. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Goodfellas. This gangster epic focuses on the life of Henry Hill as he climbs the ladder to the top of the mafia. I get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. Goodfellas is widely regarded as one of the greatest mafia movies. You want some? Huh? And with its violence and adult language, this movie perfectly sums up Scorsese as a filmmaker. <laughs> it's gonna be a good summer. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Doc. That is a lot of money for a kid like you, all right? His next big cinematic effort came in 1995 with Casino. I had it down so cold that I was given paradise on earth. I was given one of the biggest casinos in Las Vegas to run, the Tangiers. This excessively violent gangster flick follows Sam Rothstein and his friend Nicky as they move into the casino business. It was three hours. There's a lot of action, a lot of story, but no plot. Through the downfall of these two characters, it shows that no one stays on top forever. In 2002, Scorsese made his biggest venture to date, Gangs of New York. On my challenge, by the ancient laws of combat, we have met at this chosen ground to settle for good and all. Who holds sway over the five points? With a budget over 100 million, it's an example of how Scorsese can take his gangster themes and apply them to different eras. It was also his first collaboration with actor Leonardo DiCaprio. 
Two years later, Scorsese would pick DiCaprio to star in 2004's The Aviator. Good girl. This biopic explores the life of Howard Hughes as he works in the aviation business and struggles with obsessive compulsive disorder. He is to open the bag with his right hand and hold the bag out to me at a 45 degree angle so I may reach into the bag without, without touching the paper. Show me your arm. Flip it. In 2006, Scorsese directed yet another gangster-themed picture, The Departed. In the film, the Boston police assign hot-headed undercover state trooper Billy Costigan to infiltrate the Irish mob. What do you get, your period? It was nominated for numerous awards and won Best Picture. No! No! Swear on your mother's grave, you're still not a cop! I am not a and also Scorsese's long-awaited Best Director Oscar. Thank you. Could, could you double-check the envelope? <laughs> he collaborated with DiCaprio for the fourth time to make the psychological thriller Shutter Island. All I know is it's a mental hospital. But the criminally insane. And in 2011, he stepped away from his usual violent and adult style to make the historical 3D adventure, Hugo. Is it a secret? Yes. Oh, good. I love secrets. Tell me this instant. But in 2013, Scorsese was back to his adult material and went all out with this American black comedy. The Wolf of Wall Street. Based on Jordan Belfort's memoir of the same name, it recounts Belfort's career in Wall Street. With business partner Donnie Azoff at his side, played by Jonah Hill. <laughs> The two of them meddle with drugs, parties, and who knows what else. One, two, three. The Wolf of Wall Street even set the record for most F-words in a movie. Take your little bow tie and get the f*** out of my office, you understand? Get the f*** out! This film just couldn't get any better. The show goes on! Regarded as the greatest modern film director, Martin Scorsese has made some of the most incredible movies of this age. We paid off cops, we paid off lawyers, everything was for the taking. And now it's all over. And with over 45 years in the business, he has truly made his mark on cinema. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. Yeah.